Welcome to another episode of Growth Marketers Podcast. I'm Solomon Timothy. And I'm Taylor Rowe. Today's episode is about content amplification. Uh, so we talked about essentially yeah, different ways that you can amplify your content. And what that means is we spend so much time and energy creating quality content or we believe is quality content for our website, traditionally from an SEO standpoint, right? So you're creating content that you're hoping to get eyeballs on organically or people to share on social platforms. But we don't always, uh, especially as B2B marketers, look at ways additional ways that we can amplify, promote, and extend our, our efforts. So uh, we talk about different ideas and strategies that you can actually use as B2B marketers to amplify your content uh, and really maximize your efforts. Today we're, we're talking about content amplification. Um, content marketing is, is huge, uh, especially when it comes to, to B2B marketing. Um, you know, I always say content is king, right? So uh, Solomon, talk to us a little bit about we're creating all of this content. How do we actually get more eyeballs on the content? How do we get it in front of our target audience? Absolutely. I think uh, it's, a, it's a crucial part of uh, any campaign success. It's not just producing it. I think traditionally we talk about content marketing as the process of uh, ideation, creation, publishing the content, and uh, we miss uh, a, a huge proportion of that need to go to promotion, but we often oversee that and say, ah, okay, we'll just put it on social channels and you know share it on our LinkedIn and so on. Uh, and really what happens is the life cycle of that content, you know, just really starts to die. They, they don't really get any traction because we didn't properly promote it. And today we want to change yeah. that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Today needs to be the day that we say, look, if we spend uh, $300 creating a piece of content, we need to spend $800 promoting it and creating less content because maybe you don't have enough budget, you know, to be able to promote it. Sure. So what what types of content are we talking about? Um, I just want to make sure that we're, we're specific enough here to yeah. make sense to the audience. So uh, specifically, you know, for the purposes of, you know, building out your funnel and, and getting, you know, top of funnel, middle of funnel, whatever uh, leads. Uh, traditionally, these pieces of content are long form blog posts or we call them pillar posts or things like that, um, that we want to be able to create to speak to the, the customer's challenges, pain, problems. And um, oftentimes, uh, a, m a month after you create the content, you've already forgotten that you created the content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're also looking for more topics, yet instead of developing maybe, you know, I like every blog post to be incomplete. Sure. Why? Because you should go back and add more to it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and create use the same URL, just add to it and make it better. Um, and that way you can get way more traction out of that piece of content. Yeah. So let's say if you, one thing a lot of folks don't use is their blog posts in their marketing automation sequences. You should actually be able to use every piece of content you have in any nurture uh, sequences if you, know, if you had a plan around creating content for, right? getting more leads and more uh, more conversions, then it, that every single piece is kind of thought through and say, hey, if I have 12 blog posts, they are in different, um, right? They're, they fall in different uh, you know, parts of the funnel. And I want to use the first three for the top, maybe the other three. And then our job should be just to keep promoting the hell out of the content, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, uh, like I said, to answer your question, it's primarily blog posts. Now, inside the blog post, blog post, you can have SlideShare, you can have a YouTube video, you can have a podcast episode like this, whatever. Or you can have anything you can to make the, that piece of content better. Um, however, promoting it, traditionally, the best promotion I've seen is, okay, let's send out an email blast because we just wrote five blog posts. So something, right. we have to do something about it. Um, I'm saying no, I, I'm talking about using the traditional, you know, marketing uh, channels like right. earned, paid, uh, owned uh, media to be able to promote every piece of content that yeah. you have. Yeah, you bring up a good point about, um, I see a lot of content teams, uh, SEO teams, focusing on creating content because everyone understands what's you know, so important about content, right? Uh, and when that content hits in terms of, you know, 
it's actually gaining some traction and getting some traffic. Uh, it's like, okay, what can we do to recreate that, right? And the reality is you go through and you create 10 pieces of content or maybe 20 pieces of content, and one of them starts to get traffic. And then, as you mentioned, you kind of just forget about those other 19. But there was a reason that you created that piece of content in the first place, right? So if you're really going through doing your research and understanding where the gaps are in your marketing strategy and saying, okay, I need to create this type of content because here's how it's going to be valuable to my audience. You, you thought it was important enough to spend time and energy researching, right. writing the content, optimizing the content for search, and then it doesn't get any traction or another content piece starts getting a little more traffic than that one and you kind of just throw it away. So I and like this idea of how do we then take that and then maximize that and it goes back to that, you know, focusing on, you know, quality over quantity where instead of writing 20 pieces of content, maybe let's write 8 or 10 and let's see what we can do to exhaust all of our efforts to That's drive right. traffic to that. So I like the idea that you said about, okay, I know this is traditionally an organic piece of content, right? Or you think right. about it that way. Um, but we don't think about that, you know, here at 1IMS, right? It's not, okay, this con this piece is for social and this piece is for organic and this piece is for video. It's more of, as you mentioned, how do we create this valuable piece of content and there's going to be 18 different formats of it Correct. that can be kind of spliced and pieced and put into different uh, platforms. So I love the idea of amplifying that content uh, through maybe even some paid efforts, right. although it's traditionally a, an organic channel. So what sort of paid initiatives can you do? How much should you spend? And, and what would that process even look like to say, I know I created this long form pillar page or content piece, uh, but I'm not getting enough organic traction. So how do I actually go ahead and amplify that piece of content aside from a channel like you know email marketing? Correct. I mean, before we dive into that, I was going to answer okay, why perfect. the 19 pieces of content or whatever piece of content didn't really get any traction is because the sheer volume of content being produced. Okay. I right. It's a, like so point, much yeah. content. Where is there? Where is there shortage of content? You tell me. What industry? Which? Right. Everyone is talking about yep. the same point. You search any any keyword you'll see 55 million results for that particular one. You got lucky with that one piece that got traction. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, assume none of them are gonna get traction and you're gonna have to do all the promotion part to get it out there, right? Sure. Um, we go through all the pain of creating the topic and getting the approvals and proofreading and publishing and we just hit publish and we move on to the next, hoping that it's gonna drive traffic and I think that's right. That's where we need to dive into all the other areas. Um, so, in my opinion, if we're if we're going to do something that's scalable, it has to be paid because you you at least can at least can predict uh, what it can do. Um, so in the scalable part, there's lots of tools out there. Again, you could use you know if you want to do retargeting, people are already doing retargeting ads. So you could do YouTube video ads if you needed it. Uh, but what specifically uh, we want to talk about today is this content discovery networks like you know, Outbrain or Taboola or mm. something like that where you're paying a very small cost per click and you're, you know, putting out a, a basically it's a, it's a pay-per-click ad, but you can change the, the thumbnails, you can change the mm. headline, you can A-B test it and see if we can get good traction on a piece of content that then we could, you know, improve the content so that it can convert better, mm -hmm. but at least you're going to start getting traffic right away, yeah. right? Of course, you want to use your social media channel to do it, but chances are these algorithms are set such that they don't get any traction just because you posted it. They're going to reward the one that has the highest engagement. They're going to reward the ones that you've been engaging with, right? Mm -hmm. It's personalized to every single person. Back in the day, you post something on Facebook, everybody that liked the page would see the content. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be the case anymore, so you're out of luck mm -hmm. <laughs> just posting it socially and hoping right. for the best. Right. Or the other part is sending an email because that's what you know the checklist says, send an email with the content. Right. That's not relevant. They're not in that pain right now, right. right? The content created and when they actually need it, it's probably two different time zones, time, right. time, uh, you know, so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you look at that and, you know, like you said, amp the idea of amplifying the content. So you write a blog and you put that on your website and, you know, it's you have to wait for organic. Even if yeah. you're aggressive with your organic strategy, it's not most likely, depending on your website, it's not going to show up tomorrow, right? So. No one, essentially no one's going to see that. So then the other option is, like you said, email that out. Well, 
there might be, you know, if you had 30% click-through rate on your emails, that means only even 30% of the people open the if email. If you had that. Right. All, only open the email, and then how many of them read it? So maybe you're looking at, you know, 10, 20% of your audience is actually going to see that content. Correct. Now you look at social platforms, like you said, okay, well, let's share this on our, our social page. So then you're only as big as, used to be, you're only as big right. as your audience. Now you're only as big as 10% of your audience, right? Right. Uh, the and that's the audience that, you know, proactively goes and follows you or likes your page or whatever that is. If you are in a B2B space, um, it may be you know, likely that your, your customers don't even know your social profiles. They're not following you on LinkedIn or not fo- you know, right. liking your page on Facebook, maybe. So then you look at even a smaller and smaller percentage. So um, this idea of leveraging additional platforms uh, to actually pay and promote that to get outside of your audience and extend your reach, I guess your known audience, right? Um, so you talked about like a, a content discovery platforms. Uh, some of the most common ones are Outbrain, Taboola. Uh, can you explain a little bit more about what exactly those platforms are and how they right. differentiate from like a, a traditional a search ad? Or, ad or right. Search ad. Um, essentially, they've made you know partnerships with all the big you know content websites. You just take CNN.com or pretty much any website where the publisher is trying to monetize their traffic. Mm -hmm. They put these ads uh, that are extremely relevant to what they were reading, and they look, they're called native ads because they don't look like ads at all, right? You're kind of reading content, there's some text below it that says around the web or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's got a nice, uh, uh, you know, thumbnail because that's what most people click on. Mm -hmm. And you see those thumbnails, you will know that's an ad because (laughs) they're weird. So you look at them and say, huh, interesting, maybe, you know, this is my health cure. You know, you, people click on, oh, how to lose weight, how to, right. whatever. Yeah, you kind of traditionally think of them as the very clickbaity. Correct. Still on the internet, there are still those very clickbait, you know, headlines, content, headlines, right. topics, whatever. And it almost looks, I guess, what would you say to the people that would argue that those platforms are just, you know, tricking people? It's almost, It's a cheap way, cheap tactic to trick people to go to your website and they're going to have high bounce rates and all sorts of things. So uh, what would you say to, you know, combat that or do you agree with that? Well, if you put, obviously, um, in B2C world, there's a lot of that. But if you're, you know, doing more B2B, you put a nice headline that makes sense to your audience. The only ones that are going to be clicking, in my opinion, sure. are the ones that are relevant unless there's, you know, you know, they're big fat fingers or something. They yeah. just, you know, click on it. However, if you want that's an that's an option to other options like sponsor post on facebook and linkedin yeah. and so on right this is just another way that you could use to get so much lower cost per click the reason why i'm saying that is you want to start driving traffic to see how is that content going to perform in terms of getting you tra- you know actually conversions if you have call to actions within that content, well, they're not really going to click on the call to action unless they're engaged in the content. Right. But you got to first drive some traffic to the content. Right. Right. Yeah. Many of the posts that we have on websites, you look at after 12 months, they get about one visit a month. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the, if you look at the graph, it's really high when you publish it because you're promoting and doing all that. It kind of goes down and down and down and there's just really no traction after a while. Right. It's because, again, we forgot about the content. We think we need to keep creating more and more new content when in, instead we should just create those core 10 or 15 pages right. Right, that speak to the pain and then really use that in our marketing automation so that... Everybody gets to see the content. That's why I like it rather than a one-off email. Mm -hmm. Because what are you going to do next week? Send the same blog post again? You can't do that, right? Right. But if you systematically use that in your automation sequences and you systematically use that for generating top of funnel awareness traffic to your website, there's a huge awareness part that you get by content amplification. You're not just looking at it to get conversions. You need to know that people know that you exist, right? right? That's a huge part. Mm -hmm. How much of our budget actually is going towards brand awareness? Right. I would rather have it go to a content piece that actually can convert than just having a logo, right? And saying, hey, we do XYZ service. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not even so concerned on the conversion path on the conversion rates or whatever you want to look at on that type of traffic um, as much as I would be with just like you said, the brand awareness, the introducing a new relevant audience to our our business, our Correct. service, our product, uh, and like you mentioned, you know, if you're not if you're not looking at okay, I, I don't want to get a bunch of 
cheap, irrelevant traffic, uh, then look at that in your actual messaging of the ad. So just like you said, if you don't like clickbaity titles, don't use them, Correct. and then you won't get clickbaity clicks. Correct. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, look at how they're actually interacting on your page, how long they're staying, and, and that is can feed uh, and fuel both your direction with understanding what people like, what topics people are engaging with based on the click-through rates and the time on site, uh, as well as it's going to fuel some of your re remarketing ads and those sorts of things where now they've been introduced to your brand, those other ads, social ads, everything is going to perform much better. So I think if you control the quality of that traffic through your messaging as much as you can, uh, because some of those content discovery platforms, you you can't control as much about where they're going to be shown. Their, their own algorithms are going to you know, put that up. Uh, it will be mostly based on behavior and those sorts of things. So they can, you can assume that it's, it's going to be targeted, um, but then just leveraging that Other sort of things. audience and saying, okay, now I'm just going to get the most clicks as I can and say, you know, all the, you've seen the ads, right? It's like, you know, this one, take this one pill and you're going to lose 10 pounds a week or whatever. <laughs> doctors hate this pill, right? And people, I know, this is what doctors it. don't want you to know. And what you, yeah, and what you have to understand <laughs> is those websites that are doing that have a different business model than that you, you do. probably do Correct. as the listeners. They're so, trying to sell a pill. Right, or they're, <laughs> it's all, you know, whatever, the, the content and ad arbitrage, right? right. They're trying to get as cheap traffic as possible so they can sell ads on their website and it's all just you know this big it's a game click yeah right. click fraud basically <laughs> and what what you need to do is look at your actual audience and say okay the advantage of this traffic is or yeah the advantage of this traffic is is extremely cheap compared to a search ad targeted search ad or something like that so um, I want to focus on quality and not as much on quantity because it's already cheap. Correct. So make sure that your messaging aligns with that piece of content. And then you can be much more strategic with the type of content you're creating because as you mentioned, you know, 80% of, or what is it, 20% of your content is going to drive 80% of your traffic, right? So what happens is people just, you're just playing a guessing game of creating a bunch of content, see what sticks, throw it all at the wall, Correct. see what sticks. And unfortunately, you just create a wider and wider and wider website uh, that you have very you know, shallow competing pages. It's very right. shallow. So this new strategy would allow you to, which what you should do, and you, again, you spend so much time doing the research, creating the content, and then, you know, if it doesn't work, you kind of just give up on it or you, you hold on to that one thing that is working and see how much traffic you can drive. Well, this would allow you to treat all of those pieces of content equally, be more proactive, and then once things, once you see the engagement, one of them that will take off like they were before organically, you're not only relying on that, you've been driving traffic from these Correct. other pieces of content the whole time. And traditionally, anytime you create content, it was for the purpose of, like you said, it's just organic, organic, organic. Keep uh -huh. trying until you get. And I think those days are over where you can just assume that producing a piece of content is just going to automatically right? Mm -hmm. Get you the, the traffic that you want. It was sort of this blog and then don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, as, as you can imagine, especially in, in some of those niche B2B, it's very hard to create the content. It's right. not easy. Well, the problem is right? that it, it works for some people, uh, right? And we've talked about this in other podca podcasts, the, the idea of the sort of survivorship bias, right? Okay. Uh, you see that and you're like, well, you know, this company all they did was you know blog consistently create quality content but you're missing the big picture of all the other variables that led to that success and sometimes you can't recreate that you know lightning in a bottle so you have to be able to create a very systematic process sometimes you'll get lucky but the it should be very strategic and you know scientific the way that you go about getting traffic and this is one of those ways that you can predict guarantee and predictably right drive a sp specific amount of traffic every month. Right. Every piece of content you put out there, you should have a checklist of how do I plan on promoting it. Again, you could use earned, owned, shared, you know, paid media, mm -hmm. and putting a, a bigger emphasis on paid will now have a budget for every piece of content, right? We talked yeah. about those discovery networks. Remember that you can retarget to that traffic with call to action that actually matter that no one's going to click on unless it's relevant to them. Yep. Right. So sponsored uh, posts on LinkedIn, it they're great mm -hmm. if you want to introduce again your brand to a new audience. Mm -hmm. Yet 
are we doing that with every blog post we create? If we're not, then we're just creating blog posts for the sake of creating blog posts. Yeah. Right? If you don't feel like you could put money on it and promoting it, we're just going through the motion of creating content just because, again, you need something to share. So let's just write something. Right. And it doesn't have to be that much. I mean, we're not talking about you tens know, of thousands yeah, of dollars. Right. Even a thousand. <laughs> I don't even think, you know, depending on the audience, that, you know, like you talk about a LinkedIn post promoting a blog. If you're, let's say you create two blogs a month, right? And you could just spend a couple hundred dollars each, $100, $200 each. It's going to get so much more attention and give really to give you so much more data on what is actually working so that the next two blog posts you write, you know, you can kind of see what, what people are commenting, are they sharing it, uh, or how many people click through compared to the other posts. I mean, you have two completely different posts possibly, so use that to your advantage and, and stop concerning yourself with, well, I spent two hundred dollars and I didn't get any leads. Like, right? That's not the purpose of this. That's a finite game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's a podcast in itself. Um, so, so what about other paid platforms? So we talked about uh, some sort of a content discovery platform like Taboola or Outbrain. Um, I mean, there's more than that. Those are kind of right. some of the, the right. big two, but there's a, there's a lot more. Um, and then you mentioned social ads, uh, social promotions. So LinkedIn, Facebook, um, you know, Twitter, any anything where your any platform where your audience is at. So where, what are some other platforms that you can use in a B2B setting to promote content such as a blog post? I mean, you certainly can use your organic channels, right? You don't have to sponsor them. You can just okay. post it up. Um, you can, like you said, um, I want to definitely emphasize the importance of putting it in, in your nurture sequence. Uh, I, you could post it on LinkedIn groups, right? Mm -hmm. That's totally free and organic. And uh, you can also take the content if you want to do that. A lot of people uh, put them on a Medium. Uh, website, right? Mm -hmm. Just taking the content yep. and putting a link to it or just, you know, putting an intro. There's several ways I'd say you can promote it, but those things aren't guaranteed to get you visits, right? Mm -hmm. They're just sort of there if they happen to see it. Uh, because again, the sheer volume of content is just so much out there. You can create um, Quora ads. Mm -hmm. Quora is up and coming. A lot of people are using that. Um, Reddit ads. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's sky is the limit. Yeah. I was I was going to say in terms of if you're if you really think you've created an evergreen content, it's okay to do a five dollars a day uh, Facebook ad budget and mm -hmm. just let it run because it's always going to be showing it to new and new people. Right. Sure. Tweaking that, and so if you have twelve of them, now you have a pretty healthy budget right. of you know, people getting to that content on right. a regular basis. And you didn't have to go try all these different platforms. You didn't have to hire six people to manage yeah. all these platforms. You're just doing it yourself. Um, and again, you don't have to turn them off. That's the thing you're continually generating. Again, I think one of our episodes need to be about the flywheel. Mm -hmm. It has to get bigger and bigger in terms of momentum, mm -hmm. right? And that's how you do it. You fuel the momentum. Mm -hmm. And if you have better success in entire marketing is working, you're growing your business, then you got to come back and make that $10 a day. Yeah. Build that momentum. Now you really start to see people recognize the brand. They recognize the logo. They recognize the service. They know what you stand for. And that is the part we actually, we, we you know, we're inconsistent in continuing to promote it. Even if they do hypothetically, they stop it after yeah. a month and say, well, you know, let's create something new and let's try something else. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened to the last piece? Because we shouldn't have, right? We should reinvest into making that one better and using that over and over and over and over and over again. Because if you really believe that you have an amazing solution, then you should be proud of that piece of content yeah. and just ride that all the way. Yep. So, so what about the idea of uh, actually using like a Google search ad uh, to promote an organic piece of content, right? And so traditionally, someone that's managing... Uh, an AdWords campaign, you know, they're measured on conversion rates and, you know, return on or cost per lead or cost per acquisition, return on their investment, return on ad spend. So this idea uh, may be a little bit um, scary to somebody who is judged on that type of performance to then pay money for, let's say, a top of the funnel search term where you would traditionally look at that to get organic. But um, I, I feel like that would fit within this strategy that you're talking about of driving relevant traffic that's extremely relevant because someone is actively searching. So is that something that, that you would suggest? And how would you go about doing that in terms of setting the right budgets and overall strategy? Absolutely. So I mean, search uh, 
cannot be any more targeted, right? I yeah. mean, they have an intent. They're searching something very specific. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, the longer tail the term is, the cheaper you end up paying for it. Right. So why wouldn't you, right? And also, uh, with regards to like targeting and things on Facebook, you may need to come back and tweak it every once in a while. Versus in search, you never have to tweak it mm -hmm. because it's a different person searching, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's a different person searching, and 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 just using that five dollars a day budget exa example, you can continually get more visits to that. And again, now you have a very high intent person on your website with retargeting that you should have running automatically, you now have, right, a bigger pool of pixel sort of visitors. Mm -hmm. Now you can have, uh, uh, you know, targeted retargeting ads based on whatever the content persona is. So let's say if this is going towards CIOs, those folks now can see a retargeting ad that makes sense to them, mm -hmm. right? If a different content is for a different persona, now you have a different uh, retargeting ad that targets the people that you're trying to attract in that content piece. Sure. So you now have this funnels essentially working by itself and you kind of had to only set this up once and plus, listen, you don't have to stress out creating more and more content. You need to make the content work for you, mm -hmm. right? And instead of being so stressed out and getting all the you know ideas for the next month and just stressing yourself out, I think we're overlooking on how easy this is, and this is where we should spend time. So my big, I guess, the thing I want to say is you create less mm -hmm. and promote more, right? Um, you certainly can create more yeah. once you've figured out how to do both very well. Mm -hmm. But we're all about creating, 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 and promoting is sort of like on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Because again, maybe you need budget, so you don't, nobody's gonna give you budget, so I guess I'm just gonna go create more because that's the only thing I have under my, my power. Right. That's not the way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if you don't have the, the proper resources or you know enough resources internally to do all of that. This is something that can help extend your efforts, right? Because like you said, you're creating all of this content that you believe is valuable, and then you're kind of testing it in real time because you're putting it in front of who you believe is your target audience and seeing what gets the most traction rather than giving it to Google to then determine when it should be you know, serviced at the top, how long that should take, and then ultimately then trying to see, you know, you're, you're almost looking at what is the most what is the least competitive topics that I can get out there because that's going to be the easiest and fastest to ranks when in reality you should look at what is the most popular or the most engaging or the most, uh, you know, insightful content that I could promote and then looking at multiple ways to do that, like you mentioned. So I think the paid, owned, and earned side of that, every, you know, as a, a simple, you know, action item you could take away from this is for every piece of content that you put them out there, put out there, look at one or two ways to promote it on each of those paid, owned, and earned channels. Uh, and that will be so much further ahead of your competition in terms of the way that you go about creating content. That, that just that thought process will give you an advantage right. whether you know your level of execution on it is perfect or not. Right. No, oh, yeah, I mean this is basically uh, all I wanted to yeah. share today. So um, anything else you want to add? Yeah, no, I think the, the whole idea behind this, right, is um, especially if you have some sort of offer, right? And everybody has an offer that they're trying to promote. And, and we talked about in the past with measuring the success of your campaigns and some of the unknown variables would be your, your brand awareness and the quality of your traffic because traditionally you look at a re remarketing ad or a retargeting ad. And the idea behind that is they're people who have already been introduced to your product who, or service and they're, they're interested because they've been to your website in the last 30, 60, 90 days. So how do we enhance and improve those campaigns? How do we improve our conversion rates? How do we improve our, our sales process, right? Um, you know, you talked about the, the brand awareness side. Uh, just imagine, you know, how much more effective your sales team can be if every single company that's in your you know key list of companies you're trying to get in front of if you call them up and say you know hey this is taylor with one ims i want to talk about your marketing strategy and like yeah one ims i read your content all the time or they say who right those are two completely different kind of conversations, conversations right? right so you get that side of it uh and you get the long-term conversion rates are going to go up you're going to get your remarketing campaigns are going to perform better when you actually do have a piece of content to you know 
download or a webinar for people to attend because they've already seen the value. They trust the brand. They know the brand. So in terms of measuring all of this, I think that's kind of the one thing I wanted to mention is as a marketer, we shouldn't be afraid to engage in campaigns that you can't immediately measure, right? And that's, I think, one dangerous thing we've done with all of this data that we have access to, all of these tracking and attribution tools. We look at, okay, well, this, this channel is driving you know, five times return on investment or 10 times return on investment. Uh, and it's so short-sighted of, okay, I gotta get X number of leads this week, this month, whatever, and do that, but also look at what can I do over the next three months that you know, will put me in a position six months or nine months or Correct. three years down the road that I can improve my campaigns, not by 2% or 5%, but you know, 1,000% or 10,000%. What would that look like in a perfect world, and then start doing some of that. And they used to do that a lot with marketing, right? You'd get a lot of commercials, you know, you'd do ads on benches right. for buses or inside the train or, uh, you know, commercials, billboards, all those sorts of things. And now that we have all these cool tracking tools, it's like, well, it doesn't work. Let's so just, you stop it. I'm going to run, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to run a search ad to a, a landing page that doesn't have any other links so they can't go anywhere else and they're either going to convert or they're not going to convert. And then, you know, the people that convert, we're going to call them right away. And if they don't buy, then we're moving on to the next one. And I think this can help shift that mindset. Um, so if you can do all of this, it, at least start thinking about this way. Um, because again, there's a reason you're creating that content in the first place. If you think it's valuable, let's try to be as creative as possible and persistent to right. actually get that in front of our target audience. Absolutely. Yeah, no, uh, first of all, like I said, uh, I just wanted to create a case for content amplification. Mm -hmm. More I'm often, sold. there's budget. There's more budget for creation than there is for promotion. And I think, you, you know, we ought to think more about if you spend $500 creating it, chances are you probably are spending $500 in time, yeah. right? And resources and designers and, you know, proofreaders. Yeah. And you should now spend $1,000 promoting it if you can't then you know, we got our math wrong. Yeah, you're right, and, and you look at that and try not to get too focused on deliverables or activity level as a, a reporting metric, right, of, uh, well, I created you know, five eBooks or you know, 20 blog posts or you know, we created 100 videos. That's all great, uh, but I, I wouldn't say that that's inherently better than creating you know, five long form pieces of content, right? Correct. I would want to look at the data that we just talked about that we do have access to track and say, uh, well, I'd rather spend a month or two months creating, you know, a 10,000 word, you know, pillar page that addresses every single pain point that my target market and buyer has in this specific scenario that you know, has stats and data and it has text for search, but it also has videos and it has an infographic. And then I'm gonna look at you know, four or five different ways that I can promote that over the next six months and make sure that I'm exhausting that piece of content while still having a strategy for SEO because it might take six months for that piece of content to rank, right? So when you look at that after six months and you say, okay, well, you know, you essentially created three blog posts for me because it took two months for each one. Um, again, I don't necessarily think that's worse than uh, creating 60. I, I don't think that one is better than the other until you look at the engagement metrics, which I believe that the quality over the quantity would, would win out in that scenario. No, uh, and most often, like I said, if your marketing folks aren't producing content, I'm just saying if I had a marketing manager, you would think like, oh, keep producing more because, hey, that's our job. How many are we creating, right? It's sort of this, that's what what, I mean, yeah, it's like, what are we closing today? That <laughs> yeah, that reporting metric, I think, mm -hmm. is sometimes... It, you, it's skewed. It, yeah, because you're, you're reporting, let's say, you know, if you're an agency and you're working with the company, you're reporting back to that person who's then reporting back to the CEO or the CMO, and it, it kind of gets, maybe gets lost in the translation. And if you're an internal marketer, it's the same thing, right? It's like, well, I'm paying you to sit here all day and come up with the marketing strategy and work on these four or five channels. Channels, and what you're saying is that it took you a week to get this one piece of content live or it took a month to get this out there. Um, and I think just shifting that mindset and, right. and getting buy-in from the entire company that, hey. Less is more. Aren't we trying, yeah, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to run around in circles or are we trying to be effective? Correct. That, that's very true. And that's kind of what I was thinking too. 
in this episode as we were planning it, it's like, okay, we spend so much time energy creating it and we don't spend any time energy promoting it. Uh -huh. And if we promote it, it's all free channels. Everything is free, right? Uh -huh. It's sort of like cookie cutter. And then you get very little engagement. I mean, look, I'm sorry to say sometimes you don't even see share buttons on the content pieces yeah. on the website. How do you expect somebody to freely share this content if it was worthwhile? Yeah. Because the buttons are hidden or it's not even available. So that's kind of how we treat content and promotion, right? Yeah. And I'm saying, this is very general, there's a lot of companies spend a ton of money promoting it and I love those companies, they're doing very well. I want the rest of the world to catch on to that same kind of mentality. Yeah. It's in those two few unicorns aren't the only people that can do this. Every B2B company should have a content promotion budget that's independent of your search budget, that's independent of your retargeting, that's independent of you know all the other things that you're doing. If you're spending money uh, for software, which thousands of dollars are spent on software, how much are we spending on promoting the content? Right. Think about it, right? Mm -hmm. I would say 10 times what you're paying on tools, because mm -hmm. truly that's gonna help you get the traffic that you need. Uh, the tools are just systems at yep. the end of the day. They don't necessarily grow your business. You need the traffic, you need the lead. So uh, that's about it. All right. So uh, thanks a lot for tuning in, folks. Um, and uh, as always, um, reach out to us if you have questions, thoughts, and future topics. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, and we'll see you next time.